The start of a new year is typically all about getting off on the right foot. But for some caught up in Me Too allegations, that foot ended up in their mouths. Two with Massachusetts connections. Take Kevin Spacey. He'll be in state next week to answer to charges of sexual assault after the son of former Boston news anchor Heather Unruh accused the actor of groping him when he was 18 years old at a bar in Nantucket. On the same day those charges were announced, Spacey released this video, channeling his former House of Cards character, President Frank Underwood. But you wouldn't believe the worst without evidence, would you? You wouldn't rush to judgments without facts, would you? Did you? No, not you. You're smarter than that. Frankly, we'll let a jury decide. But Spacey isn't the only accused Me Tooer whose latest public action has gone a little off the rails. There's comedian Louis C.K., who was accused of sexual misconduct by five women and said the charges were true, by the way. The Newton native was caught on tape during a recent set about kids today and their penchant for activism. What are you doing? You're young. You should be crazy. You should be unhinged. Not in a suit saying, I'm here to tell f you. <laughs> You're not interesting. Because you went to a high school where kids got shot. Why does that mean I have to listen to you? Talking about the Parkland kids, and that's not even the half of it. One thing he did steer clear of during his performance was his own problems. Joining me to discuss from a Boston public radio co-host and a Boston Globe columnist, that would be Marjorie Egan. Hi, Marjorie. Hello. Jen Dederick is the author of She the People, an Illustrated History of Women's Citizenship. You know, Jen, I don't even know what the question is <laughs> on that video. I get, what was your reaction to that spacey thing? All in character as Frank Underwood. I sort of, I watched a little of it and I thought, I don't have room in my brain for this. And I, and I, they seem to be, it's like they're panicking. They don't know what to do because they're not on TV. They don't know what to do because people aren't paying attention to them. And it's this, both of them are doing this weird clawing at this fame that they had in this pathetic, weird way that seems unnecessary and not helpful. Let's stay on Spacey for a minute. It was almost like he was mocking the, yeah. the whole thing, unless he's just lost his... Marbles. What was your reaction to it? Well, I thought he had a great little Santa Claus apron with all those <laughs> Santa's all across. That was very yes. seasonal and yeah, all that. Nice. But you just think he's kind of lost his marbles a, a, a little bit. I mean, why would you do that? Have this sinister voice, and people are already thinking of you in a very sinister way. Post these allegations against him, so I don't, I don't get it. And I, Louis C.K. Let's stay. I want to stay on Spacey oh, stay for a Spacey. couple of minutes. Okay. Because on Spacey, by the way, this is a guy unlike Louis C.K. who we will get to. Yeah. No apology from Spacey. In fact, no acknowledgement that he ever did anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Even though he's been accused by as many as thirty people of some sort of sexual misconduct, as evidence of this, no admission of anything. Here's a little more from that. Uh, let me be frank. I mean, if you and I have learned nothing else these past years, it's that in life and art, nothing should be off the table. We weren't afraid, not of what we said, not of what we did, and we're still not afraid. Because I can promise you this. If I didn't pay the price for the things we both know I did do, I'm certainly not going to pay the price for the things I didn't do. I don't even know what to say now. I didn't know what to say two minutes ago. You know, uh, I don't want to play lawyer here because he has one of the best lawyers uh, on the planet on these uh, uh, kinds of uh, issues. And uh, uh, he, and, well, he doesn't have a lawyer. It's a criminal case, but representing the, the family. But he did say that he was 23 years old. Uh, to uh, uh, Kevin Spacey, Heather Unruh's son, said he was 23 years old. That's not denied. Is that not a pretty big hurdle in this criminal case? It's the only criminal case of all these allegations. You mean for the... For the prosecution. For the no, for the prosecution. For the pros is that a big hurdle for the prosecution? Yeah. He put his hands down his pants. I understand that, but he turns... Yeah, and there's allegedly a Snapchat video of that as well. Yeah, I don't know But he that put his hand down his pants. And by the way, I'm surely not taking the side of Kevin Spacey right. here. I'm just trying to think like his defense lawyers think. Beyond the fact well, that he represented he was 23, well, allegedly this went on for three minutes. I assume that the defense is going to say... Uh, why didn't he run away? But why you didn't could he also move? say you're 18 years old. You're not supposed to be in the bar. You're drinking because you're not 21. So you say you're 23 and, and lie about it. I, I just think he looks so bizarre. You know, I talked to you about this, I think, a few months ago. This whole idea that when do these guys get to come back? Well, Spacey, I don't think, is ever going to come back because of the 30 people and the fact that you just feel creepy watching him in the movies now. But with Louis C.K., they don't get to come back.
to the positions of power and that enabled them to abuse all these people in the first place. And I just don't think these guys get this yet. Yeah. They can they can do something else. Yeah, so he can go be a librarian. Well, he can't be a librarian. He can't be a librarian. No, no, he can't, can't work with kids. Can't yeah. Do, but, yeah, no, there's... But well, the, I think, but like, Louis, you and I have had this discussion, yeah. not only you and I, you and I have had it, including yes. on set. You're sort of our go-to Me Too <laughs> person. I don't know how that happened, but you I'm are. A, and do, the, it, the, it, the do it uh, yes. well. But, you know, unlike Kevin Spacey, who, as I said a minute ago, is, is denied everything, does, does Louis C.K. get any points for having not only acknowledged, but I think it was the New York Times, he said, when the allegations were read to him, he said, all true. Well, uh, does that get you anything, it, or does it not? In some way, well, so first of all, I would say, because Tina Opie couldn't be here today, Dr. <laughs> Tina Opie. Who's usually your partner usually in these things, yeah. She would remind us that it's really about the women and about what they're doing. And so he, he did... He did um, uh, he did acknowledge it. He sort of apologized. He made it sort of, his apology was just kind of weird, like, obviously they were incredibly impressed with me and overwhelmed by how great I was mm -hmm. or something like that. And, um, but the thing is, is, it rang as really false the minute he started doing these sets. Uh, the, Martha, Martha Plimpton, the actress, did this, wrote this great thing on Instagram yesterday about it, saying when he's talking about the Parkland kids and saying you guys, don't, you guys weren't shot even, you don't get to complain, that's like he's saying it to the women who, like, come on, I didn't even, I didn't even touch you. And it's, and it's this, your feelings are stupid brand of comedy that makes it, it puts a lie to everything that he said he did. Well, you know, I'll, I'll channel but, David Axelrod, who uh, pretty much said that's the kind of thing this guy has been doing yeah. for a career, just not about the Parkland kids and not about trans Americans. Here, by the way, here's a little bit of that uh, bootleg video of his performance where he is talking about those who are transgender. You should address me. They're like royalty. They tell you what to call them. You should address me as they them. Because I identify as gender neutral. Oh, okay. Okay. You should address me as there. Because I identify as a location. You know, a lot of people laughing there, too. It sort of reminds me of, as offensive as I find it, it, it sort of reminds me of that nauseating speech the president gave uh, making fun of, uh, of uh, Christine Blasey Ford right. with the audience laughing and cheering. He was giving them what they wanted, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I've done a 180 on Louis C.K. I was not a big follower of his before, but it did seem like a lot of this weird stuff about his sex life was part of his shtick. And uh, I, I thought what he was doing is making fun of himself in his weirdness about sex. But then you see this and you think that the guy's got no sense. The comedians that succeed have a very... Mm -hmm. uh, just instinctual sense about where to go and what works, and this was just so. Who makes fun of teenagers who watch their 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 classmates bleed to death? And you know, it's I find this. Doing what's that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lisping, when he's like, come, like, uh, you know, in some ways, to me, is I kept using the word bizarre. I think he used it four times to discuss the Kevin Spacey video. That performance was no less bizarre, yeah. which suggests maybe both of them lost their marbles, or maybe. They're doing a Trumpian thing and trying to identify a certain constituency that yeah. maybe feels that, for example, white men have been persecuted. Yeah. I'm serious about that, by no, the way. That and maybe trying to appeal yeah. to that, quote, base. Well, Is there, that not possible? There are those people. I mean, like, you know, the, I think the last time I was on here, we were talking about Al Franken. And there mm -hmm. are still people who, are, who will never forgive Kristen Gillibrand for speaking out against Al Franken, which is this crazy thing. Al Franken came out and he, he did handle it exactly right. He did the right apology. He was classy. He stood aside. He's also a comedian, also very funny, much better, much funnier than Louis C.K. Um, and uh, th but there's still there's this con this thing where people say, why can't, if we could just have Al Franken back, that would be that we just need. And it's like for what? Like I, I mean, yeah. I love Al Franken. And there's this there's this base that that feels. I do think there there's this group of people who are scared that white men are going away, that white men aren't going to have any positions of power anymore, and, and it's them. You get the last 15 seconds if you want oh. it. I was okay with Al Frank until I found out that he grew up the rear ends of all these other women. I thought when yeah. he was acting as a comedian, he could, get, he could have gotten away with that, maybe that yeah. one picture. But, you know, who grabs your butt when you're standing next to them? I mean, Jim, you've never done that in all the years I've known you. <laughs> On that note, Jen, nice to see you, and I guess Marjorie, nice to see you too. Thank you both.